A differential equation, then, is something that involves derivatives of some function. So, for example, this here is a differential equation because we've got a derivative on the left, and in this case, something else on the right. And this particular equation is dy by dx is equal to a times y, where a is some real number. The solution to this equation is y is equal to capital A times the exponential small a times x, where a is some arbitrary constant. In general, with differential equations, it's easy to verify a solution, to figure out that something is a solution, but it's much harder to find them often. So we can easily check that putting in this expression a exponential of small a times x is indeed a solution of this equation. But just by looking at a differential equation, it may not be obvious what that solution is. Now, that particular equation is an example of what we call a first-order differential equation. That means that there are no derivatives here in this equation that are higher than first order. So we only have a first order derivative here. There's no second order derivative or anything higher than that. And the solution here, y equals capital A times the exponential of small a times x, has one what we call an undetermined constant a. That is, the solution, as we said, will work for any value of the constant a. And that's a characteristic of a first-order differential equation, that the solution has one undetermined constant. And when we have that undetermined constant in here, we call this a general solution of the equation. And the way that we fix undetermined constants is by putting in other conditions, typically boundary conditions. So let's choose a specific value for our constant small a in our differential equation. Let's choose that to be 0.4. So we're now saying we have a ramp of some kind with a slope dy by dx, which is equal to 0 0.4 times y. The general solution has to be then y is equal to capital A, some undetermined constant, times the exponential of 0 0.4 times x. And I've sketched that here. But you will note that I have not yet been able to put a scale, especially on the vertical axis. I could have put one on the horizontal axis, but I cannot yet put a scale on the vertical axis because I don't know what A is, capital A. So let's presume that for some reason we know that at x equals 0, y is equal to 1.5. We know the height of the ramp at the position x is equal to 0. Well, the exponential of 0 is 1. In other words, at x equals 0, this part, the exponential of 0 0.4 times x, is 1. But also, when x is equal to 0, we know that y is equal to 1.5. Well, that tells us that capital A has to be 1.5, 1 1.5. So therefore, we have managed to fix capital A now, and we have our specific solution, y is equal to 1.5 times the exponential of 0 0.4 times x. And as a result, we can now put scales on this axis, in particular on the vertical axis. We now have a specific scale. And you'll note that at x equals 0, y is equal to 1.5. Suppose instead that with the same kind of ramp, that is dy by dx is equal to 0.4y, so we have our same general solution here with still an undetermined constant in it, a. Suppose that we know instead that at x equals 0, the slope of the ramp is 0 0.6. So we know the slope here of the ramp at x equals 0. Now, dy by dx, we can figure that out. Of course, it's just 0.4 times a times the exponential of 0 0.4 times x. That's the same thing as we have up here. Then, at x equals 0, we know that the exponential of 0, 0 0.4 times 0, is 1. So, 
we know that our slope, which is to be 0.6, also has to equal 0.4 times a times 1. That is, it has to equal 0.4 times a. So therefore, a is 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.4, which again is 1.5. I happen to have chosen the slope, so I get the same answer here. And now again, I can put scales on my axes, especially the vertical one. Now we've seen two different types of boundary conditions. Boundary conditions that specify the value of a function at some position or boundary, that was the first example we looked at here, are called Dirichlet boundary conditions. So this is a French pronounced word name, Dirichlet. And boundary conditions that specify the derivative or the slope of a function at some position or boundary are called Neumann boundary conditions. So this is a German pronounced word, Neumann boundary conditions. Now let's look at a version of the equation where instead of having a as a real number in here, we have an imaginary number, i times b. So b is a real number, but i times b obviously is imaginary. Well, it's actually quite straightforward to solve this equation. It's solved exactly the same way as we did before. It turns out it does not matter whether this constant in here is real or imaginary or even complex. And so with a, an imaginary constant in here, the general solution to this equation is of the same form, actually. Instead of a in here, we've got i times b. So the solution of this equation is capital A, an undetermined constant, times the exponential of ib times x, which is the same thing, using Euler's formula, as a times cos bx plus i sine bx. Incidentally, although the exponential of ibx multiplied by an arbitrary constant is a solution of this equation, neither the cosine of bx nor the sine of bx is a solution of this equation. So this equation has a solution that's sort of a complex oscillation that's going on here, but an ordinary real oscillation is not a solution. This particular equation will come up many times in quantum mechanics, and it's a very important kind of equation there. And it's important to know that the exponential of ibx is a solution, but neither cosine bx on its own nor sine bx on its own is a solution. Mm -hmm.